Welcome back. Before we get started, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Please like and comment. The comments are the most important thing because that's how we get the communication. That's how we get the dialogue. And I think that's the most important part of this channel. We want to have the dialogue. We want to actually start bridging the divides and having the conversations. Okay. I don't know if the topic was clearly defined in the beginning of the video. I know we kind of had some uh, editing mishaps or whatever. But the topic for today was perpetual adolescence and what it means for men. Um, for those who are aware of what perpetual adolescence is, it's the continuation of some of the things you might contribute to young teenage boys or early 20s in men. You've seen those same things attributed to 30 year olds and 40 year olds. And the question is, why is this happening? Why are we seeing more men, older, still doing childlike things? In the story of Pinocchio on Pleasure Island, Pinocchio learned a tough lesson. When you stay on Pleasure Island for too long, you become a jackass. You, became, you become a slave to your masters, whether it be working hard, manual labor for a menial amount of money, or just dead-end drone jobs. So in this video, we're going to discuss that. Hope you like it. Thank you. And here we go. It's almost like being a young a young man, especially in society, I think the reason why it's push, being pushed back as to why we're taking longer to grow up is probably realistically it's more so that it takes so much more time to actually get a career and get a job to actually mm -hmm. support yourself in society. So you tend to do things that you did in your childhood for a longer and extended period of time. Um, just, it could also be, I mean, just to kind of start off, a little bit, a little bit hot too is like a lot of individuals. Which you, when you have like a different types of wealth gap, and you have different types of women choosing high, the higher tier, higher bar of men, you kind of you lose out a lot of men who have average paying jobs or even minimum wage paying jobs that don't really have that same access to women. So that also they got they have to actually almost go into their into themselves really and try to build on themselves before even having a, a real shot at the table. It's like a lot of, getting a lot of scraps along the way. So you think the issue is a masculine one, that women don't have extended adolescence in the way that men do today? I think, yes, yeah, far, far mi more minor, okay. far less. That makes sense. I kind of want to take it in a slightly different direction. I think it has to do with the fact that we've gone away from being uh, family oriented and mm -hmm. much more on the individual. We're all now about us, 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 and we're being selfish about like if we want to choose a career that takes long versus like if we were more family oriented, mm -hmm. we might be working a job immediately and that forces you to grow up faster. So I think family that businesses and like family that businesses or not even family businesses, but just like doing what rather than taking the school route, maybe you do whatever your dad's already doing yeah, yeah. Um, and going into that field or whatever. But now I feel like everybody wants to be their own person and choose their own path. And I think that's where I think that's what it is for me. I think that's what I would point to. That makes sense. And so how much of uh is that just because of the technology we have now, like as far as like the video games? I know they're way more uh, accessible. You know, back in the day, you know, a, a console might cost six hundred dollars, but average paycheck might be two hundred. So you're talking about a huge expenditure of resources to acquire those things, and now they're like, really easily accessible. Do you think that has anything to play with it? Play into it? You'll take that one. Um, I guess entertainment in general is more accessible than it used to be. Um, it's more addictive than it used to be you'll have people who it's kind of like a weed where it's not or like addictive in and of itself but if your life is kind of sucky or difficult and it's just a lot better to sit there and do nothing while you're high kind of thing same thing as internet or same thing with video games or same thing as whatever it's anything that prevents you uh, anything that lets you just have a good time right in the moment without producing anything while you have responsibilities that you're not getting to especially i guess for men like you were saying well, so I wouldn't put it on video games in particular, although I'm sure for a large demographic that's the primary right. concern. I think it's a, it's a multifaceted issue. Entertainment so, in general, I could see But it. I think there are some things and that are more pressing. Yeah. Do you feel like a, like a lot of men, because they're not getting access to women, because obviously with hypergamy, you have a lot of women who want the, the top 
echelon of men, probably the top 10%, and they're getting the most access to women, they have a lot of men just pretty much checking out. Like, I don't have any access, I'm an incel, I'm a doomer, I want to just pretty much like give up. So I'm just going to play games, eat Doritos, <laughs> jack off. It's kind of like the stereotypical. Yeah, like, I don't think that. Because there are those nerdy guys right now that are just playing video games and stuff like that, making millions of dollars, and they're getting the baddest girls out there. But I think but you're also talking, you can't touch on a small portion of the population. That's like a lot of them, right? Like, yeah, you're hitting, no, like hitting you the So half the world's the women. You can't have all of them go for the top 10% men. So not every woman. They might all want the top 10% men. That doesn't mean they all get the top 10% men. So after they fail for two years, they got to check their standards. I mean, you would think that, but a lot of women would rather be alone than settle. I don't believe that. I, can't I don't believe that. I think people generally want to be with other people. I mean, more than ever before, women are more independent, it's, obviously, but I, I think generally speaking, people are social. I think it's a standard thing. It's like there's been a standard that's almost been set for a lot of women and to accept anything beneath yourself. Like, I feel like everyone in our generation, to a certain extent, has been taught that we're all special. <laughs> and to accept less than what you've been taught yeah, but you, it takes a year of life to kick in the, you know. There's, a far, there's far more men that don't have access to reproduction than women do. Women will, have, will fight for the same man as long as he's of a certain status as opposed to the other way around. It's a lot, a lot more rare. Sure. Nothing in life is absolute zero with certain exceptions. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, mean, I think there's like a certain stat, like, I mean, throughout history, about 40% of men don't have, don't have reproduce. And yeah, I think yeah, those yeah. numbers have actually been kind of getting, Most getting, of our getting, getting higher, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because women aren't exposed to war. Women aren't exposed to, like, deadlier jobs. So a lot of young men will die earlier. So that, that's one reason. And, you know, um, there's been, like, sayings, like, where a woman would rather be the concubine of a king than be married to a butcher. Right. Because a king, whether, whether you like it or not, he has resources to give your offspring way more opportunities. And a butcher can only do so much. So would you rather have your offspring get the best chances of survival or be with somebody that you can uh, be your companion? It's almost a, a selfish, selfish yeah. decision at that yeah. point is how you can view it. Should I choose love and be with, be with the butcher or selflessness and have set my kids up for the rest of their lives? In that, I, in think, that I think that's a pretty strong focus on a single variable and a very complex, any interpersonal relationship. I mean, if you're blaming the fact that this person is like disgusted by you because of this one gene, it's probably because you have no idea how horrible of a person you are to be around, maybe kind of thing. I mean, mm. like you design your own life at the, you know, at, at, like at the end of the day. If if you're trying to become friends with more people and you're not, then figure it out. Don't blame a gene. Don't blame an evolutionary marker. Obviously, those things have their place. I'm not saying they don't exist, but. Get your shit together and do something about it. And be accountable. Yeah, being, to some extent, being accountable. I mean, I'm not saying it's 100% your free will, or whatever, but it's got to be something. Like, I think an insult behavior mindset is they just have this path of least resistance to find an excuse for as to why they don't need to change or if you grow up, like you're saying. Oh, well, well, for sure. And I definitely feel like uh, there's a, an extensive community of, like, you know, the red pill community. Obviously, they have some merit, and that's why you know it resonates with some people. But also, there is a, a not like a being more like self-reflective, like listening. Like your life shouldn't be dominated by like trying to get access to women. And that was just a preview. We have so much more content to share with you guys. Please like and subscribe, and thank you again for watching.